How are we doing guys? Always to be Leeds nil, Wolves 1 post-match review of the game. I mean, look, it's disappointing. I mean, I've made so many notes on the game once again, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, late night post-match review. And yeah, look, I think today we've just seen a game of two halves, haven't we? A game of two halves, really, I think. You know, first half, you've got to give us great credit. I mean, first half, we're playing some magical football. Absolutely magical football in terms of build-up play, the way we move the ball around the pitch. And look, we didn't create chances. We're going to go on to that later in the review. But the first half, I mean, <laughs> that was just liquid football. In incredible football. Bielsa ball, it's fine just in terms of moving between the thirds and advancing play. It was fantastic to watch. But the second half, it was tough. You know, the second half was a real battle. And ultimately... In a very tight game, you know, the margins went against us, you know, we took a massive deflection and credit to Wolves, they improved massively in the second half and, you know, look, the massive deflection is one thing and, and sometimes that's what happens in these kind of games. It can be just a moment of quality, a big deflection, a defensive error. It's what happens and that's what we've got to face at this in this league. We're going to have plenty more games like this, but we might have a few games that go our way in that sense as well in terms of the margins going for us and, and it just was a very, very tight game today. And uh, Just looking at my notes in general, you know, today... You know, it wasn't really, um, you know, a game of chances. You know, I think we probably only had one or two. Wolves probably only really had one or two. And I think we did probably deserve something from the game. You know, I think we definitely did deserve something from the game. You know, I think, really, I think we took the first half, they took the second half. And I think that's probably the fairest way of kind of talking about it. And credit to Wolves, you know, they went in with a 3-4-3. Went, went three, three. Um, you know, Moutinho, Dendonka in midfield. You know, Dendonka, the ball winner. Moutinho the one to control the game and make things happen but to be fair in the first half I was surprised by how cautious Wolves were you know I was expected from Wolves certainly from what I've seen this season against City um, against Fulham just for an international break high pressing team they seem like a very high pressing team a team that tried to force turnovers and, and just trying to go from there really, you know, play a high line and be very much on the front foot. But for me, Wolves showed us a lot of, a lot of respect in that first half. You know, I think Wolves not so much dropped deep, but played in more of a mid-block. You know, I think they really tried to get as many bo bodies in the midfield area as possible, you know, in terms of the forwards dropping back a bit deeper and helping the midfield out to an extent and trying to cover spaces that way and stop us playing through the thirds. But to be fair, we just put an extra man in, you know, Click, Rodrigo, both dropped deep. And we just played around it really, really well. And it was quite easy for us, to be fair, at times in that first half in terms of building up play. And look, I think the thing is, Wolves were not great in that first half. But I think on top of everything, we made them look average, you know. We made the team that finished seventh last season, very nearly finished in the top four, very nearly finished in the top six. A team that's a top, top team, let's be honest. You know, it's been really impressive since it's come into the Premier League. A team that I'd like to think we can model ourselves on and hopefully, you know, have a couple of seasons like and build from there to an extent and I do see a lot of similar similarities between the two teams of very similar dynamics and look we did dominate that first half you know we did dominate that first half a lot and you know it's just one of those things isn't it you know just looking at my notes here um you know and I just felt in the first half Wolves were so solely playing on the counter you know they have plenty of outlets in that front three you know Neto, Pedence both good runners in behind, both can carry the ball. I think you certainly saw it from Neto from time to time. He did look a bit of a danger in that first half. Didn't really make a lot happen, but he did look like someone who could take on players 1v1. Jimenez was an outlet, you know, he was kind of stretching play, linking up play as Jimenez does. And yeah, it was, it was a strange one, wasn't it really? It's a strange one from that sense. You know, I think Wolves, you can always say as much as we were on top in that first half, they do carry a threat. They do carry a threat, Wolves, and we had to accept that. I just felt we had to score when we were on top. Because Wolves reacted in that second half. They started to show us a bit less respect. They pressed higher. They got the midfields on the ball more. And they played with more courage, to be fair. You know, and to be fair, we weren't great in the second half. But it was just the way it was. I think it was a really good tactical battle between Nuno and Bielsa. And it's not so much a case of Nuno got the better of the battle. Because he didn't. I think he just got the margins in his favour. It was just a very even battle. You know, in terms of they both kind of swapped and changed things as the game went on. It was interesting to watch it develop from that point of view. Um, and yeah, you know, as I said, we started really well, poor final pass, um, and we did, we did, we did play really well in that first half, you know, no, I know we lost the game, but there's no question about the fact we moved the ball really, really well in that first half, and deserves to go in ahead, you know, I think Rodrigo had that chance, which was well, well stopped by Patricio, uh, a couple of other little half chances, I think Bamford had one, Costa had one, uh, we even had one disallowed off Bamford, and we just didn't score, 
when we were on top or really create the chances we probably should have done. And we had really good combinations out wide. You know, Aylin, Click, Costa had something going on that right side throughout. Um, Harrison had the beating of Semedo for most of the game. To be fair, you know, Nelson Semedo was a £30 million Barcelona right back. You know, he came from Barcelona. You know, this is what we've done today. We're causing massive problems today. 1v1, Harrison had the beating of him every single time. And we've got to take great confidence from that. You know, we're moving the ball around so well. It's just the final pass, the final bit of quality, the final decision. Sometimes we just overdid it, even in that first half as well as we played. And that's just disappointing. You know, I always kind of feared, you know, in the back of my mind. We didn't see the game sort of developing like it did in the second half, where Wolves would have most of the ball and completely switch the tables in terms of possession. But I just felt we didn't score when we should have done. We didn't score when we take our chances. And that's the thing in this league. In the Championship, you know, we had a lot of games where we dominated from minute 0 to 90. In this league, you're probably not going to dominate throughout my full 90. Very, very rare. It won't happen this season. You know, there's too much quality in this league. You're going to have spells and games where you're going to play really well, where you're going to play really badly, and spells and games where it's going to go either way. And that's what we've got to face this season. We've just got to make sure, you know, when we have those bad spells, we stay compact, and you know, we keep our defensive line high, we don't drop too, too deep. And I can't be too critical of us, to be fair, because off the ball, I thought we were fine today. You know, I really did think we were fine today. You know, against Jimenez, Traore, Neto, Pedenz, Moutinho and Nemesis passing range, the threat from the full backs, the wing backs even pushing forward, Semedo and um, Saiz. You know, I felt we dealt with that okay today, you know. I really did feel we dealt with that okay. You know, ultimately the goal we conceded is unlucky, but it was just a strange game. It's a strange game to assess, to be fair, guys. And look, I've got a smile on my face because, you know, at the end of the day, we're making. We are here to compete. You know, at the end of the day, we are here to compete. We're here to play on the front foot. And I can't be too downhearted. I think the big thing is, is we've got a game coming up very soon um, against Villa. You know, it's good to have a game straight away. You know, we won't be disappointed now, but we can get straight back into it in four days' time. I'm not saying Villa's going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination, but we've got a chance to get straight back into it, you know, and put things right. And, and yeah, that's, that's the thing, really. I'm just going to look through my notes here, guys. So, again, I made loads here. Um, anything else I really want to talk about? Um, and yeah, look, I've got to talk about Wolves' chances in the second half. I think obviously Meslier makes a really good save before half time, an absolutely unbelievable save um, in terms of the way the way the chance happened. Really, you know, it's a cut back, over hit, cross comes back in. It's like pinball in the area, and then shot just comes in out of nowhere. And Meslier, strong hand onto it, saves it. And um, you have another chance from distance. Wolves, another brilliant save off uh, Meslier from Neto. You have a goal disallowed as well from Saiz, and ultimately the goal he gets. It's a deflection, I've said that enough times now already. And yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it probably was pretty even on chances and general play. And that's what we've got to face, really. Um, the only thing I will criticise was the substitutions. You know, it's very rare I've criticised Marcelo Bielsa. But I've got to be honest, you know, at the end of the day, I wasn't particularly sure on the substitutions. You know, I saw what we did, obviously. I think the first sub we made was um, Ian Paveda. Then shortly after, Pablo came on. And yeah, I just think Ian Paveda and Pablo, fantastic players. And Pablo, to be fair, got a foothold in the game. But Paveda, I don't think... I do really like Paveda. It's going to come across really bad list. But in terms of the dynamics of the game, you know, at that point, Wolves scored. They were able to sit back. Sit back and just counter. I think when you come on at that period in the game, you probably need someone who's going to run in behind at that point. And I think Rafinha should have come on a bit sooner. I think there was a couple of times we saw Rafinha... Despite only coming on for 10 minutes, he got in behind the defence. He got in behind Tomato a couple of times. Um, and yeah, I was just a little bit disappointed in those changes. Pervader, look, is a threat. But the thing for me is Pervader's a very technical player. And I think Pablo's a very technical player. I just think you know, Bamford's a very technical player. You just need someone who's a bit more direct than all three players You know, coming on in that period of the game. You know, I think you needed someone like Rafinha coming on sooner for me. Um, and yeah, that was the only disappointment I had a little bit. I think Rodrigo... Probably should have pushed him up a bit higher. You know, we're trying to play through balls into Bamford. And you think Bamford, as much as I do love, love Paddy Bamford, you know, he's not got that pace, has he? You know, you need someone like a Rodrigo. If you're going to try and play through balls through the defence and try and cut them through them that way, you've got to have someone with pace to try and do that. You know, Rodrigo running onto it rather than Bamford because Bamford in the foot race realistically isn't winning them. And that's just me being honest, guys. It's only, you know, I just disappointed a little bit with how we responded to going one down. Um, that's the only thing I can criticise. I might get criticism for it in the comments, but I just think in, in terms of dynamics, you know, you look at them dropping deep, you need someone to run at the defence, run in behind, go a little bit, little bit more direct. Rafinha, Rodrigo playing the front three, 
you know, moving Rodrigo a bit higher up the pitch. That was something to change for me. Um, but look, you know, it's one of those things, you know, we'll learn from it. And yeah, you know, we will learn from it. That's the big thing. You know, that's the important thing. Um, we can get down the arsenal about it all we want. But look, a lot of teams are going to lose to Wolves this season. Wolves are still thoroughly expect to be in the top seven or eight this season. No problem about it. Um, essentially, even have the cup run. They're a good team. They are a good team. Let's accept that. You know, they've got some top quality players in that football pitch. Raul Jimenez is one of the best strikers in the league. There's no doubt about that for me. Um, you know, Traore is a brilliant 1v1 player. Moutinho has been a top class centre mid throughout his career. Neves is really promising. You know, um, Willy Bolly, really good centre back. Conor Cody's in the England team. Rui Patricio is an international level goalkeeper. That is the quality we face today. And we just got to accept that. We've got to accept that sometimes you are going to face that bit of quality in this league. And ultimately, that's part of the reason they pushed themselves over the line and got a scrappy win. Um, and yeah, maybe in the second half, you know, I think we forced play a little bit. You know, I think maybe in the first half we were nice and patient. We played in, within the thirds really nicely, played through the thirds, you know, back to front really quickly, short, sharp passing, one, two, one, two. And just nice, just nice little combinations. But in the second half, it just felt, as I said before, we're trying to play the through balls into Paddy. We're trying to play the through balls out wide, cross fielders, and it just wasn't coming off. You know, Calvin Phillips in particular, trying cross fielders, over hitting them. And look, sometimes you are going to over hit them, but sometimes it's about making the right pass, reading the pitch, knowing when to write the right passes. And I just thought we would forced play a little bit too much. And when we went one down, that's my disappointment. And ultimately, it shows how far we've come as a team that I'm criticising the team for doing certain things when we're playing a team against like Wolves. This isn't a, a case of we've lost to Fulham or West Brom. No disrespect to either team. I'm just saying that We've lost to a top quality team today and that shows how far we've come that we're disappointed after the performances we've put in against Liverpool for 90 minutes, against City, against Sheffield United, that we're disappointed that we've not really showcased more in that second half in terms of creating chances and, and that just shows how far we've come. So let's not get too critical. Let's just, I've been critical, but let's keep perspective. You know, we're going to learn from these things. Bielsa probably looked at that and thought, okay, maybe the balance in that second half, you know, the subs made, probably needs to do something a little bit different. And maybe Rafinha didn't come on straight away because ultimately it was his debut. I'm not panicking, guys. I'm not panicking. Just slight, slight little things I thought was I was surprised with in terms of the substitutions. But I look at it going forward. The only thing I question a little bit of this team and the only thing I worry about a little bit, you know, at the end of the day, chance creation, I think we've got enough creators on that pitch to create chances. I think today was just one of those days where Harrison over-hit crosses, Costa over-hit crosses, um, and, you know, it, it just happens sometimes. And the full-backs, you know, occasionally over-hit crosses as well. You know, just, you know, sometimes our final decision-making wasn't quite on it today. But in general, I've seen enough in those first five games to say we're going to be fine in terms of creating chances. We've not got enough goals. We've got enough goal scorers on the pitch. Defensively, in terms of the back four, we've got strength in the back four. I think Robin Koch has been absolutely superb. He's absolutely superb. For me, he's a future Leeds captain. You know, if we can keep hold of him for long enough, that is, because... My word, he looks just top quality, like outstanding. You know, I've compared to Robin Cock before he came to Gerard Piquet, but, and it seems like a real cheesy kind of comparison to make, but there's so many, in terms of style of defender, obviously I'm not saying Robin Cock is the next Gerard Piquet, I'm just saying in terms of style of defender, you know, he wins his headers, you know, he's aggressive, but he's not over the top, he doesn't give away free kicks, it's controlled aggression with Robin Cock. You know, he's good on the ball, Positionally, he's good. He plays on the front foot. He's got. He ticks all the boxes of a, a modern-day centre back. You know, and I think it's the composure, the mentality, which is really impressive with Robin Cock. And you have the top quality centre forward he was up against today. And look, I know Raúl Jiménez scored, but ultimately, I thought we did a decent job on Raúl Jiménez. Ultimately, produced the merit of quality in the build-up to the goal. But it's what happens, and we did a good job on him today. We made it as difficult as we possibly could, and that's all you can ask for. I just think maybe in that second half it highlighted maybe the need to change to a 4-2-3-1. Um, you know, I think obviously Bielsa has spoken about Rafinha using him as a number 10. Okay, we can do that. But for me, I look at it now and say not many teams in this league play with a single pivot. Just Calvin Phillips and Holden Midfields. I think you only really see two in this league play that way. Liverpool and Everton. Um, you know, think, look, Liverpool are one of the best teams in the league. But even Everton, you look at and think they're getting a little bit exposed defensively as the season's going on. You know, they're conceding a lot of goals despite being so high on the table. And for us, 
you know, just look at it and think maybe Calvin just needs a little bit of help in there. You know, maybe Click drops deeper, a natural kind of player who can play alongside um, KP and just help him a little bit in terms of defensive transition and winning the second balls and that lot. You know, I think it's a big ask for KP in a league above where we're having a little bit, little bit less of the ball than we did in the championship just to play him as a single pivot. Just give him a little bit more help. Um, and I think it makes the build-up play easier. You know, you've got two players dropping deep like KP does. Someone else dropping deep alongside KP, it makes the build-up play a little bit smoother for me. And I just think in the second half, when Wolves pressed, they won the ball back a lot from outnumbered us in that situation. You know, KP got on the ball. You know, he's got Moutinho pressing him from one side. Um, then Donka pressing him on from the other side. Just getting a little bit outnumbered in those situations. It's not a criticism of KP. KP's not started the season brilliantly, but a lot of it is tactical for me. You know, a lot of it's the case that he's getting outnumbered. And he just needs that little bit of help for me. Um, and look, you might disagree with me in the comments, but I do think, I feel we're going to change to a 4-2-3-1 at some point. And I think that is probably going to be something that's going to suit us better. You know, ultimately, you know, the 4-1-4-1 works fantastically well in the Championship. It's worked well so far this season. But as teams are adapting to us, we are having periods in games where we can't get out. We are having periods in games that we can't get out of, the, out of our own half. And, you know, it's, it's not something that's regularly happening, but in a 4-2-3-1... I think it just gets a little bit more out of the number 10, gets us up the pitch a little bit more easily, gives KP that little bit more defensive support and makes it just a little bit easier for the back four for me. And that's just something I'd like to see us change to. Uh, maybe not necessarily from the start of the game, but when a game like that against Wolves, as it develops, you know, in terms of when we start to get a little bit overran, maybe just switch to the 4-2-3-1. But look, you know, it's just, it's just my opinion, guys. It's just my opinion at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, I just thought in the second half as well, you know, against the low block, because we had so many technicians on the pitch, so much threat from out wide, a lot of it led to just recycling possession and crossing the ball into the box and hoping for the best, you know. And, and maybe it was a little bit more to it than that, but I just thought we were very reliant on crossing today. We didn't have much threat elsewhere. You know, very reliant on trying to get the ball into the box, into Paddy Bamford, and try and score from those situations. And look, it's not too bad a plan, but it felt like that was all we were trying to do in that second half. And we just maybe need that little bit more between the lines, Maybe a 4 2 3 1, you play Rafinha into the 10. Pablo is more of a 10, um, you know, less defensive responsibility. Maybe something else happens in the game. But that's just slight things, you know, it's not a common theme, this. That's the key thing, guys. This is the first game in the whole season where we haven't been able to create chances. It's not a common theme. That's why I'm not panicking too much. You know, the 4 2 3 1 suggestion I've just made is something to consider. You know, if we have these moments in games where we struggle to create chances, just having that little plan B to change to. And that's just that's just my opinion, guys. And let's keep perspective at the end of the day. It's been a top, top start to the season. It was a scrappy game today. Moments of quality from both teams, but ultimately a game of few chances. Um, anything else to talk about? So I've spoken about Robin Cock being a few future captain, huge presence in the back line. Uh, just reading my notes now, guys. And yeah, I think that's all I can say, guys. You know, disappointing to lose at the end of the day, but positives and negatives. We'll learn from this today. We will learn from this. And there's plenty in this squad to make sure that this doesn't happen again or doesn't happen on a regular basis. And let's remember, you know, at the end of the day, Premier League for a reason. We're a top quality team. Let's keep the faith. All these TV. Thanks very much for watching, guys. And make sure to check out Joe Wayman's post-match reaction as well. The live watch along if you haven't done already. Thanks very much for your support on that as well, guys. Uh, match previews coming out for the Villa game. And yeah, we're straight back at it. That is the main thing, guys. We are straight back into it. This game's gone now. It's in the past. We're straight back into it on Friday night. We're going to Villa away. There's plenty of kind of emotion between the two teams after what's happened. You know, I still feel a little, you know, a little bit, you know, Villa went up instead of us. That controversy around the click goal. Let's just go into it now, guys. Plenty of passion going into that. Plenty of hunger. And let's fight back. Let's derail Aston Villa's title pit, guys. I'm going to leave it there anyway. See you later, guys. All these debate.